We need to talk about inertia. We have a version of the world that explains gravity, but we don't have the next step. Why is it that objects in motion want to stay in motion? How can we explain that with the material architecture that we're developing? Obviously, inertia is the other side of gravity. Einstein famously developed his general theory of relativity by putting those two formulations the force of gravity equal to the inertial force, F equals ma. And from that equivalence principle, he was able to derive the general theory of relativity. And so we are starting from the point that gravity is a result of the web-like interconnection of atoms. And you can watch that video here where we basically lay out the radial elastic model and how gravity and these inverse square relationships fall out of it. It's very simple. The idea, just like with light, is that the power of light or the power of gravity, let's say the intensity of gravity, falls off as you move away. And this makes sense with the radial architecture because you encounter the square less number of connections per unit area as you step away. Our conception of gravity is essentially that the attractive force and, as we're about to explain, the tendency of a body to stay at rest is a product of its connectivity to its environment. So we view the entire atomic universe as essentially a giant spider web, where the surfaces of the atoms, while they do have this shell-like architecture that reflects their orbital shapes, they also have some extended form, right, which has been referred to as the ether in the past, but we're saying no, this ether actually has structure and it's radial. There are these filaments which project from the shell surface of the atom. And as a result of those projections, there is a dynamics of connectivity which is constantly in play. As you move through a room, you're constantly breaking and forming new connections to the atoms that are in that radial distribution of your location. So, how does inertia fall out of this? Well, you first have to deal with Gravity, right? So gravity, let's, let's take the Earth and you on the surface of the Earth. When you are close to the surface of the Earth, there's many radial connections that are leaving the surface of the Earth, and they are all impinging on you. Because there's just a lot of atoms on the Earth. Sure. And as you move away from the Earth, you're gradually moving through various... I, I think you can call them shells, right? Because as you move farther and farther away, you can imagine that there's a shell that is commensurate with your elevation above the Earth that has X number of filaments going through it for every square meter of that shell. And so it's basically a, a question of flux. When you're standing on the surface of the Earth, there's many filaments going through the same cross-sectional area. As you're standing farther and farther from the Earth, there are R, a one over R squared number of filaments going through that piece, that same square area. Okay, so less gravitation as you're farther from the Earth, more gravitation as you are on the surface of the Earth as a consequence of radial architecture. In order to explain inertia, we have to answer the question, why does an object want to stay in place? Which is more straightforward than the second question, which is why does an object in motion tend to stay in motion along the path that it was already traveling? The first one's obviously quite easy to explain using our model because quite frankly, when something's bound up in a web, look at a bug squirming in a spider web, it's difficult to get out of, right? So when something is tethered down to the ground by all these filaments, it wants to stay there. That's pretty straightforward. But what happens when you start something moving, right? You, this accelerative process, it takes some effort. Okay, you have to pull the thing free of its web. But once you get it moving, assuming there's no friction, that is that the actual shell of the atom, the actual the actual orbital shell isn't grinding uh, electrostatically or otherwise against something, getting tangled up in it. Why is it that it will keep moving forever without any other force acting upon it? And this is a little tricky, but we have some ideas. My intuition is that it has to do with network effects, where once you start moving in a specific direction, 
what you've done is you've created a slipstream around the body that's in motion, where there's this area of influence that's around the body where the network has arranged itself in this laminar flow. And so as you're moving, there's a front of your movement and what it's doing is it's affecting the filamentary network that's out in front of you and basically getting it ready for you to move into that next space. And the wake that's behind you is closing off. And so there's this process of filaments behind you that are breaking, filaments in front of you that are forming. And so there's these two fronts of motion one that is behind you, one that is in front of you, and they're rearranging as you go. And there's some kind of uh, hysteresis in that. And so when you want to suddenly make a deviation from your course, you have to accelerate by, by definition, right? Because a change in your motion is an acceleration in some other direction. And when you make that acceleration, what happens is that you have to push against the network and start that laminar flow going in a different direction. And that requires more energy than it does to just continue along the path that you've already been traveling. That's my intuition. Yeah, I see it as the process of establishing some equilibrium dynamic. If you snap an elastic band, for instance, the filaments behind you as you're moving forward, you're going to receive some momentum from that snap. There's a recoil, let's say, is the most common way of thinking about it. And so you get a little bit of kick forward that balances out perfectly that w of the tug that you're receiving in the rear as these things break. So in constant motion, you have this equilibrium between the release of the rear filaments and the kick forward of the release actually gives you some energy in the forward direction as it breaks. And I think that that uh, balance in those two forces allows the body to stay in constant motion, essentially. However, like you say, if you change that course, then all of a sudden you have to reestablish a new connectivity of flow between these two processes. And all of a sudden you have excess tension on one side versus the other, and you feel some resistance to that new change of direction. The takeaway is that as you move, as any body moves, you or a spaceship or even a single atom that's flying through the solar wind, it's crossing many filamentary connections and its immediate location is defined in context of everything that's around it, right? And so the motion that propagates is the motion that the entire network has agreed upon, I mean, not in an intelligent way, but just has physically arranged itself to support. And the minute that you want to defy that, you have to apply some kind of acceleration to break the tendency of this network because it has stiffness, it has physical characteristics, and if you want to rearrange what you're doing relative to the rest of that network, it's going to require a little bit of a push. And it's not a huge push, right? I can get up out of this chair and I can walk away and it's not beyond what I'm capable of doing. But I do sometimes want to just sit in the chair and that's, that's inertia. I just want to stay where I'm at. Yeah, I think the special case is the body that's in constant motion already. Like a body that's in motion is this beautiful equilibrium where the filaments are able to rearrange Whatever energy they get from breaking, they're getting back in the form of forward momentum. And so there's this beautiful balance that happens. Mm -hmm. And if you want to disturb any equilibrium process, you have to add effort to the system. You got to push something and that costs you. And that's what we experience as inertia. So let us know what you think. And we will be back next week with some other phenomena. Mm -hmm.